Hello, friends, and welcome to Looking Up. This is a podcast for Christian women, and our aim and our goal is to point you to Christ and to help you to look up and see the things that are heavenly and spiritual instead of the things that are just crowding around us here on this earth. And we enjoy our week every week just sitting and talking to one another, and we are inviting you to join us and just kind of pretend like we're sitting at a table together and having a cup of coffee or a cup of tea, whatever you like. And uh, I'm here with my friend and co-host, Kathy Pollard. And how are you doing this week? I'm doing great. I love the way you put that about crowd things that we get crowded out with. And this is our opportunity to talk and look up and mm-hmm. look forward to this every single week. <laughs> Me too. Me too. Yeah. Well, what have you been doing this week? Anything exciting? Yes. Yes. Literally right before we started recording, I had company and um, my sister and I invited our mom here to my house for a luncheon and Ray came with her and we celebrated Mother's Day early. Oh, that's fun. So yeah. And so we did like a little girly frou-frou kind of meal. And well, what I didn't know is that they turned it into an early birthday celebration for me also. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And Christy made this beautiful, so pretty pink cake with the most gorgeous, I'll I'll share pictures, of course, most gorgeous flowers all over it. And it was funny because it said happy and then it said a blank day. And she (laughs) said that so it can be Mother's Day or birthday. (laughs) Happy Mother's Day or happy birthday. Uh And everything ended up matching. And Christy's kind of a theme person anyway. She's, she thinks in a design kind of a mind, you know, Mm -hmm. so she had this beautiful pink cake and then all of the gifts had were kind of floral, you know, and they all kind of matched and the wrapping paper had these gorgeous pink roses all over there. Everything matched and was just beautiful. Well, um, and Ray brought these big, beautiful, I don't know if you can see them in the background, see those um, hydrangeas, they're big, beautiful, pink, Mm -hmm. hydrate so they match the cake and all the presents and did they know no I don't think so I don't think they planned it that way so it was really fun I didn't know it was going to be a little birthday party for me also but um so we just finished up with that we played a little game we ate we had cake we played a game it was fun so it was you and Christy and your mom and Ray yes and Ray enjoyed being with the girls huh yeah, he tried to leave. He said, I'll, I'm just going to go to Home Depot and let y'all do your girl <laughs> Do manly thing. things. Yeah, but mom was like, please, please, please. And I think she just wanted to go to Home Depot with him. <laughs> mm-hmm. She wanted him to wait. Yes. So anyway, but it was, it was fun. It was fun. Well, How about you? Your birthday falls on Mother's Day. Yes. Has that, that happened happens, before? Yeah, every now and then. In fact, when I was born, I was born on Mother's Day. Oh, well, that was a good gift. Mm-hmm. I made my mom a mom on Mother's uh-huh. Day. Yeah. Well, we're going to be there on your birthday and I, I was going to pretend Best gift ever. I was going to pretend like I had forgotten and not say anything about it, but I can't, I can't, I know it's your birthday. I know it's mother's day. So happy early birthday. By the time this Thanks. airs, it, your birthday will be passed. Yes, but we'll still be together. Yeah. But you know, by the time you reach a certain age, birthdays are celebrated over more than just one day. Is that right? Yeah. I do know yeah. someone that celebrates for the whole month. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, if you can pull it off, why not? Well, true. True. Yeah. (laughs) I don't know if Neil will go for that. (laughs) When it's my birthday. (laughs) Yeah. So our plan is to go to the ark on Monday, right? Yeah. We're still doing that, right? Where is that exactly? (sighs) You know, I looked it up. I can't remember the name of the place, but I know it's three hours from here. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm looking forward to that. I've been wanting to go there ever since they built it. And uh, mm-hmm. I talked to someone last night who's been there and, and I said, is a day going to be enough? And she said, well, if you don't stop and read every single little post that's, along the way. That's what I've heard too. Uh, we've so we been may told, have to leave you, Neil and John in the dust. Yes. We've been told you probably should spend the night. And we said, we can't, we're going to yeah. have to squeeze it all. And we'll have to get up early. It opens at nine. Okay. So hopefully we can be there by the time it opens mm-hmm. and then, you know, stay as long as, yeah, I think we're married to men who are going to want to read every single fact. Yeah. So you and I can just race ahead and we'll see everything and they'll read everything. That's right. right. Yeah. Okay. Well, I can't wait. I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah. So this week has been for me all about focal point. This is Thursday. Mm -hmm. So focal point really started Saturday night. John spoke Saturday night and well, they had a youth day. They actually called it, um, a short course kind of thing for 
to prepare for DU that comes up here at Dripping Springs in August. Okay. So they had a youth event on Saturday with, I don't know, five or six different speakers. And, um, and then Sunday they kicked off, you know, well, I guess Saturday night was more the kickoff of focal point. So we were there Saturday and we were there all day Monday. And then on Thursday, we couldn't do every day. That that's one of the hard things about, I think I said this before that it's so close is that when you're close to home, everything at home still goes on. Mm -hmm. We had doctor's appointments and just different things that we had to take care of. So we didn't get to go to every single session, but it was really, Plus you had house guests. We did. Yeah. We had lots of Petrillos in our house and it was a lot of fun. We enjoyed yeah. having them. So I um, watched your lessons live. It was excellent. They were well, both thank excellent. You. That was sweet for you to share that. And I didn't even know. I'm glad I didn't know ahead of time that they were going to live stream that because that would have made me <laughs> yeah. extremely nervous. I'm glad they did. That was great. Well, I did something different with um, screen mirroring. Have you ever done that? No, but I've wanted to. I've chickened out. I yeah. wanted to because it'd be great for teaching Bible marketing uh -huh. to be yeah. able to screen share. But I always chicken out. But I saw you do that. and I was like, wow. Well, it was it perfect. wasn't perfectly smooth because mm -hmm. the internet kept kicking me off, and I was wanting to kind of go back and forth between my the writing. So I had everyone write a certain section of scripture. So we mm -hmm. took ten minutes, and they did that. And then I was hoping to, I had already done it ahead of time on a different piece of paper. So I was kind of referring to my paper and then writing it on my iPad. And then it was reflecting on the screen behind mm -hmm. me. And then I wanted to take everyone to Bible Hub to show them how to use that. But that's where it kind of got a little bit clunky because it kept kicking me off the internet. Yeah, but you handled it well. It was real smooth. Well, thanks. I <laughs> It didn't feel super smooth, but it, I it figured smooth. maybe they yeah. got enough out of it to know that, that it's very user-friendly and they can mm -hmm. go and, and get pretty much anything they need from Bible hub. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, yeah, was that good. was, was that was a, it was a good week at focal point. And, um, what else did we do? We, last night we went after focal point over to Sam and Julie Dilbeck's house. You know, they're, they're right next door in the preacher's home and Dan and Diane Winkler were there How fun! and Eddie Parrish was there. And of course, Brett and Julie were with us and, and it was just, it was fun to sit around the table and, Aww. you know, Dan, Dan, Diane is not usually with him, but she was mm -hmm. able to come with him this time. I say, usually whenever he comes into this area, it doesn't seem that she's able to come, but, um, but it was, they talked about funny <laughs> things that happened in ministry and, and Dan was, Re recounting a story and I can't remember who he was telling it about but someone who put on a pair of waders to baptize someone and he had a belt to that he tightened around himself to to hold them up but then they all sort of the legs acted like balloons and so when the man <laughs> tried to get down in the baptistry his feet popped up and anyway Dan was just standing up and and acting it out and it was it was hilarious just listening to him. He's just such a nice man. Yes, you know, he he's is. one of those guys that I always think when I think of people that I respect and why do I respect them? I, I just think so much of him. He remembers people's mm -hmm. names. He always remembers my name. And I always think, how do you remember who I am? And, and always he'll go to you to greet well, you. Well, because you're Carla Moore, duh. Mm -hmm. Durr. Yeah, Durr. whoever that is. But <laughs> you know what I mean? He's just, yeah, he is. He's, yeah, such he's a remarkable. Mm -hmm. He's a great man. <clears throat> he's genuine too. Mm -hmm. He's so he talented is. and can break down a text like nobody's business, but he has just maintained this genuineness and humility. And you, you yeah. can tell he just loves God and yeah. God's people and the word. And exactly. Yeah. And I, one of the days, uh, my picked up mom and brought her. And then I was going to tell you about this because it's kind of, it's a little bit icky. It's a oh. little bit boorish and immature again. Oh, <laughs> well, but we didn't was, do any last week. So uh, we didn't, I thought we did a little bit, but did we? no, no, <laughs> we didn't do anything boorish. Um, so when I took mom home, she, she lives right next to Doug, my brother in his little, it's kind of like a garage apartment. And you have to just kind of walk along the side of this, this sidewalk. And she has a little dog. Her dog's name is baby girl. And it's just, just a little rescue dog and sweetest little dog, baby girl, baby girl, BG. Sometimes we call her. And, uh, so when we 
we got inside the fence. We always shut the fence behind us so that she won't escape Mm -hmm. and open the door and baby girl like stopped at the door and just like she was pouncing and just went crazy and went immediately. There was a baby armadillo in the, in the yard, right outside mom's door. I didn't see it. We walked right by it. And she grabbed that thing and it tried to roll up in a ball and I will save, I will spare everyone all of the details, but she was not very nice to that baby armadillo. Oh no. I know it was very sad, but at the same time, you know, they wreck your yard, they dig holes and stuff. So yeah, I've never seen a baby one. Well, I mean, it was, it was probably about that big, not super tiny, you know, it was like, By the time you add a tail on it, it was a lot longer, Mm -hmm. but yeah, she did what she was going to do. And then she just left it right there on the doorstep and and I had to deal with it because Doug was gone. So, Uh. and mom the whole time was going, baby girl, stop it, drop it, baby girl. And (laughs) no, dogs are going to do what dogs are going to do. So that was my not so exciting thing that happened to me. I don't know why I had to feel the need to share that, but you're welcome. (laughs) So we are all thankful. Yeah. (laughs) I will not post pictures, even though I did take a picture That's of it. Good. I, because had some, I had to send ahead. it to Doug and say, you're going to have to take care of this when you get home. Oh, that's okay. pretty. What is that? Well, Lynn Height sent me this. Oh, that looks like a thing and, Lynn would do. Yeah, look at this side. Mm-hmm. So it's um, it's this quilt piece for the tabletop. And you can, I said, I asked her, I said, which side goes up? Because they're both pretty. And she mm-hmm. said she made it that way on purpose. There's no tag on either side so that you can... Yeah. do either way but one side has a really uh, more intricate kind of pattern on it but the colors for those of you who aren't watching are blue and yellow and white and she said that um she saw the picture of the chandelier you know the mm-hmm. antique chandelier that I have that's blue and white and she wanted something to match so she sent me this and it was beautiful and I love it and I wanted to share it with everybody yeah. so she's she's <laughs> a she's a quilter extraordinaire she is super talented also. Mm-hmm. I'm jealous of people that can quilt because I've always wanted to and just never took the time to learn. Well, she just started not long ago. You could learn it if you wanted to, if you had a little time, but you don't have time. So yeah, well, we're going to talk about that. <laughs> no. Okay. Well, no, I, so. have, I want to sew. I mm-hmm. want to sew so bad. And that's the only D I got in high school. I took you got creative. a D in I took sewing? A, Listen, I took a class called Creative Living, which covered babysitting of all things, cooking, sewing, and the whole sewing project. I failed because I chose a jumper. The pattern was called Simplicity, which is a lie. And there were 30 something of us in that room and I had no help and I, I never finished it. And so I failed it, which ended up giving me a D in that class. And my dad was like, you got what? And what class? <laughs> That's kind of a gimme and, most of the time. Right. And then not long after we were married, I tried again. I tried to make just this little elastic waisted skirt. Didn't finish it until 2 a.m. And I thought, this is not worth it. It's, well, it's just not meant to. I can sew a button and that's about it. You can grow things and you can can and you can make soap and you can mill your own wheat and make bread and you can give fantastic lessons and you're hospitable. And, and I can buy my clothes and you can buy and it's cheaper. <laughs> I tell right. you, it's cheaper. Oh, it's way it. cheaper. Fabric is not cheap. No, yeah. especially nice yeah. fabric. So well, hey, I did watch that cooking show. The one about in Paris. In How France. do you say it? Like. Le Pichon or La La Pichon. Yeah. Pichon, Pichon. And what does that mean? Do you know? Did they ever explain that? I didn't look. No, I didn't hear. I didn't hear either. And they call it the peach. So I wonder if that's what it means. Oh, maybe so. Probably. That was fun. I didn't. Isn't that cute? It was kind of one of those things I was getting ready for people to come over. And so I didn't sit down to watch it. And Mm -hmm. so I probably missed out on a whole lot, but it was so much fun and just. I want to go now. So I let's know, start. I'll add a quarter to my savings every week and little savings jar fit yeah. eight, eight thousand dollars in there. And that does not include your flight. Yeah. <laughs> so. Well, we can we can work on that. Maybe we might be <laughs> That's right. a little older. When we get around to it. And I, don't, I have to admit, I don't know about the like the big 
fishy soups and things because I'm not a huge fish soup lover, but. Oh, but you might be. Uh, yeah. You know, when you try stuff like that and, mm-hmm. and the flavors, but the cheeses, the cheeses look oh, amazing. And the cheeses. Yeah. And just to and go the to markets. the market. Oh, I know. I know. I love it. It's so yeah. fun. Well, well, we're starting to get a little color here yeah. on the farmette. So mm-hmm. <laughs> it won't be farmette. as brown as, yeah, the farmette. It won't be as brown as it was last time you were here. So we're, our it roses are in, it was, our roses are in bloom. Mm-hmm. The, the irises are blooming and they're yellow. We're starting to get tiny little apples on the apple yeah. tree. And so just, you know, I love this time of year where things are really starting to come to life and, mm-hmm. It's so exciting. So. Yeah. Well, did you garden anything, harvest anything? We, yes, I'm still harvesting a bunch of things, early spring things. And yeah. we've been working in the yard almost every day, but it's nothing really exciting. We're just planting more things and, you know, making things, putting things in pots here and there and stuff like that. So, well, I harvested some basil from my little yeah. tiny herb garden. Yeah. Right. Put it in my lasagna soup the other night. And, you know, when you told me that about um, lettuce, how you can pull the leaves or cut it and then mm-hmm. it just grows again. Well, mm-hmm. it's the same thing happened to my basil plant. Yes, that's right. And you if really you can't. keep uh, pinching them down, they like to be harvested because then they'll grow fuller and thicker instead of tall and spindly. Mm-hmm. So, so pinch them at the like at the Base next set of, the of leaves. leaves, at the next set of leaves, go down the stem and pinch at the next set of leaves underneath the top you mean mm-hmm. yeah and that yeah. also keep them from bolting keep them from what bolting you know when herbs that bolt that's when they flower oh and so then they get bitter when they do that so if you keep harvesting them it'll keep them from bolting or delay it well it may be interesting because we leave tomorrow for two weeks and uh yeah <laughs> it's yeah, supposed to what... <laughs> it's supposed to flood here on Oh, I think Saturday. Yeah. So oh. I don't know what to do with them. Like, I don't want to leave them out to get flooded, but they is also somebody house sun. sitting. Is somebody house I think, sitting I think Kyle will probably, if he doesn't stay there, he'll come over. Do you have a sunny plate? Oh, they're in pots, right? Uh huh. You have a sunny window in your house. Yeah. You might just put them in there and just ask him to water them. Water them. One, okay. A couple of times while you're gone. That's probably what I should do. Cause I think if I leave them out there, they're just going to die. Yeah. They'll be overwatered. Yikes. Yeah. Well, I was going to tell you, um, your Fruity Pebbles popcorn that you sent me saved mm-hmm. my life. Saved your life? You're- that, that might be a little dramatic, but here's what happened. So Tuesday night was our ladies Bible class, once a month ladies Bible class in my house. Mm-hmm. And what, the way I've done it is I, I taught the first one and provided the refreshments and then, and Hillary helped me with the refreshments. Well, then I had a sign up sheet where Women, if they want to, can sign up to teach one of the lessons or they can sign up to bring a snack if they want to. Mm-hmm. And so um, somebody had signed up to bring refreshments, you know, and through circumstances that I won't get into, it turned out that no goodies showed up. And so I and I <laughs> went to my pantry <laughs> I've got like 37 women in my house. I went to my pantry and I'm going, what do I have? What do I have? (laughs) I still had half a bag of Fruity Pebbles popcorn. Did everybody get one piece of popcorn? It was a big bag. It was like the five loaves and two fishes of popcorn. It was a huge bag. It filled up my whole bowl. Okay. So I poured that. um, One of my little literary boxes, one of the presents was a box of cookies called twinkles they're star shaped Mm. cookies I hadn't opened those yet so I opened those and put them on a plate and then I had leftover candy from equipped so I put that in a book so we had the most motley (laughs) bunch of stuff (laughs) on the counter for people but I think the hit of the party was the fruity pebbles popcorn they thought I made it (laughs) was it I you know I haven't had any of it was it like like stuck together, like clumps. Oh, that sounds really no. tasty, doesn't it? No, I know what you're saying, but you know how when people take popcorn and they coat it with a, like a white candy coating, uh-huh. it had that on it. And then the Fruity Pebbles were stuck to that. Okay. 
but it was all like separate pieces. Okay. So, right. wow. yeah, but somebody well, asked me if I had. You're welcome Avenue Church of Christ because yes. basically I saved your life. You did, or at least our class. Yeah. <laughs> That would have been like, we drove all the way out to the country and we don't even get a snack. <laughs> <laughs> well, such as it was, well, it always works out though, doesn't it? It does. It does. Yeah. Well, shall we get on with our topic and maybe we not break should. another record like we did last Man, week again? We, we're, we're terrible at, or good at that. However you want to look Depending at it. Depending on how you look at it. Yeah. Yeah. Let's not break another record this time. You know, someone at Lehman Avenue said again, how quote, soothing our voices are and how she kind of, she didn't say she had to fight to stay awake, but it was kind of what she was implying. Yeah. I'm trying not to be offended by these remarks. I know. So I'm trying to think how I can make my voice more animated and chipper. I don't think you should do fake. That. I don't think you should do I that. can't do that. You be you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we're just, we're just trying to be soothing. If and somebody yeah, as we said, just don't listen to us while you're driving and you'll be yeah. fine. Just, yeah. you know, you go into your bedroom, bed. turn off the lights, cut on that box fan and put us on and have the best nap of your life. David Vestal told me this week that every time he goes into the house, he hears either your voice or my voice. <laughs> so Bree's listening to us. So thanks, Bree. Sorry, David. Yeah, thank you. That's so nice. We appreciate yeah. all of our listeners. We do. We All do. two of you. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> My mom and oh, your mom. <laughs> we are actually, we are going to hit 20,000 in the next day or two. Oh, nice. If you count YouTube watches, because I'm not, I'm just doing straight podcast listens. But if you count the YouTube views, we blew that away weeks ago. Okay. So. So what was it you asked everyone to do? Where you're looking up shirts. Yeah. By the time this is aired, though, we will have already hit that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So I'm, I'm going to give like a day heads up okay. in the group and then ask everybody to wear their looking up shirts and share pictures, post pictures of yeah. them. So that'll be okay. fun. I'll bring it with me. Okie dokie. All right. So what we've decided we wanted to talk about this week has to do with overdoing, overreacting, overanalyzing, overthinking, just all of these over things. And I had to tell you. I know that over explaining was not one of our things that we decided to talk about, but I am guilty of over explaining too. Have you ever done that? Probably. Oh, I do it all the time. And John's bad at it too. But it reminded me of a time that uh, I was in Target and I was there with Aaron and I was standing like towards close to the register. I was standing in line at the register and I purposely picked a line that had several people in it so that and I, would, I was kind of waiting for Aaron because she had gone back to the toys to look for something for her nephew. And I thought, well, I'll, mm-hmm. I had a few of her things in my basket. And so I was kind of waiting for her. And so I had a reason for, for being in the line that was a little bit longer. But you know how sometimes there'll be a, a person standing behind the registers or on the other side, you know, the, the side that we're standing on and she's directing people. You could go over here. It's quick. We're over here. Oh, yeah. So she, she told me, if you want to go over here to aisle eight or whatever, it's quicker. And, you know, I could have just said, it's okay. I'll stay here. But I wrote down what I said later because I, I was trying to think about, I should not over explain like this all the time, but I said, it's okay. I have some of my daughter-in-law's things. She's coming, but she's looking for a toy for her nephew. But if she's not here when it's my turn, then I'll, I'll move around and get in a different, you know, and I just went through the whole spiel of why I was in that line. And I could have just said, it's okay. I'll stay here. And John does it all the time. It's funny when I see his text messages to people, he'll, he'll say, is it okay for this? And, you know, it'll be this long of a message and they'll write back thumbs up and then he'll (laughs) say, oh, well, thanks. But this is why, you know, another long message. So, so over explaining is something that I definitely do too, but that's really not part of our topic, but I couldn't help but Neil does that also. He mm-hmm. does that also. I think yeah. it's just because he's a very people person. Mm-hmm. I think that plays a big part of it. And he's just really comfortable talking and sharing and, yeah. you know, so it's a part of his natural personality. Yeah. Well, I think sometimes it can be endearing. Yeah. 
And sometimes it can be unnecessary. And I think usually with me, it's unnecessary. There, but, are, there are times when I think, and knowing he's going to listen to this later, <laughs> there are times when I think I'm like looking at him, like, just get to the point. They don't care. <laughs> they don't care about all that. Just What's that got to do with anything? Just get to yeah. the point. Yeah. I find myself telling John, it doesn't matter. That part doesn't matter. It doesn't yeah, matter. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Just yeah, keep nobody going. Cares. Nobody Finish. cares. Move on. Finish. Move on. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so I'll move on right now. Okay. Well, let's talk about overanalyzing and overthinking. All right. All right. Is anybody ever guilty of that? Well, we're not. No, I am. I don't think that this is a thing that I struggle too much with because usually I, no. Okay. Maybe I do. <laughs> You're looking at me like I do. Well, I mean, we have you conversations think... about. <laughs> okay. Evidently, I do have a problem with overanalyzing. Overthinking for sure. Overthinking. But not that it's a problem. <laughs> well, I guess that's a uh, harsh reality that I'm going to have to come to terms with. <laughs> now you're going to overthink this conversation. I probably will. I'm just thinking back to. All the follow-up texts to almost every episode we've recorded. <laughs> yeah, both of us. Do you think I said too much about that? Yeah. Oh, I hope yes. nobody thinks I said this. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. true. And, then, yeah. and we usually follow that up with, we're probably overthinking this. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. Well, I looked up some, uh, a few articles and, and some things that I could find, some signs of overthinking, which really is basically worry, don't you think? I mean, there's more to worry than overthinking, but mm -hmm. I think most overthinking is worry. Mm -hmm. So here is a sign, a few signs of overthinking. You're not present emotionally with others. You're distracted because you've got things running through your mind while they're, and I do this while someone's talking, mm -hmm. I'm still thinking back on something I said that might've not been the right way or whatever. So, so you're, you're kind of checked out when you're talking to people. Interesting. Yeah. So you, and here's another one. You constantly ruminate on thoughts, circling the same thought block over and over. So you're just thinking constantly about things. You keep bringing up the same stuff over and over when you're talking with others. And I find myself doing that. You know, I, I can't get moved beyond something because I'm still thinking about it. Um, you tend to relive embarrassing moments. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have any of those? that just kind of make your stomach twist when you think oh. back on them. But doesn't everybody rethink embarrassing situations? I mean, the fact that it was embarrassing. Yeah. You know? Yeah. <laughs> I, I think of some embarrassing things and I can just put the brakes on. Don't go there. Mm -hmm. I can yeah. do that. Yeah. I think it's just redirecting my thoughts somewhere else. Those are the really, really embarrassing ones that I have to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you have difficulty concentrating on the tasks set before you, your overthinking holds you back from being your authentic self. Hmm. Um, so there, those were several things that, that this person listed about overthinking and worrying, mainly just replaying hmm. things in your head and obsessing, obsessing over something that we said. And what, what about the unknowns and the what ifs? Yeah. I don't know that I would have connected some of those with overthinking or overanalyzing because I feel like I struggle with that. But some of those things you mentioned, I can see and a lot of them I can't. Like which ones can you like, not? I don't, I don't feel like I keep going through the same thoughts over and over, like obsessively going over them or I don't feel like I'm not uh, present mm -hmm. emotionally or in the moment with somebody, you know, later. I might think back on the conversation and think, oh, I hope that wasn't taken the wrong way, or I should have said this, or I wonder what they meant by this. You know, later, yeah. I think I do that, but I don't think I do it when I'm with people, I hope. Yeah. Well, I know we've talked about this a little bit before, how if I'm meeting someone new, hmm. I'm usually thinking about what I'm going to say next. Yeah while they're talking and then I completely miss what they're saying and I can't remember their name. Yeah. You know, I do so, that pretty often. Neil said, um, we had a, a couple visiting Wednesday night that he had met, I guess the week before and he had forgotten their names and he said, I need you to go meet this couple. And I said, okay. But then he goes, 
but I need you to pay attention and remember their names. (laughs) (laughs) So you can tell me. (laughs) And it's sad, but he knows me well because I'm, I'm really bad about that. And maybe that goes back to that, you know, not being there or something, but I'm really bad about meeting somebody and then thinking I have no idea. They just told me their name and I have no idea what it is. Yeah. Well, what do you, what are things that you overthink? What do you find yourself overthinking about? Well, I jotted some of those things down Um, conversations with others, uh, especially if they react in a certain way and I, or especially with if a text, you mm-hmm. know, cause you can't read tone yeah. or if somebody doesn't get back with you, I go back and read, what did I say? Did I say something that they took the wrong way? You know, that kind of stuff. And then I also jotted down presentations or really any kind of performancey mm-hmm. kind of a thing. Um, you know, later on, I definitely, and going yeah. back, Oh, I should have said this. I meant to say this. I can't mm-hmm. believe I left that out. I, you know, yeah. I wonder if that came across the way I meant it to. I want, you know, I definitely overanalyze after something like that. The podcast. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. And so. the podcast is the only thing that I listen again to. Like if I speak somewhere, I don't listen because I, I guess, I don't know exactly why. I guess there's nothing you can do about it at that point. Mm-hmm. It is what it is. And, mm-hmm. but with the podcast, I feel like, it's this conversation that you and I have had and what, what did we say? And other people Mm -hmm. I know are going to refer to it later. And I might not remember a lot of times somebody will say something. I don't remember what, what they are talking about that we said to one another. So I I go back and listen to it, you know, or we recorded another one since then, but I'm the exact same way. I don't ever go back and listen to any lessons that I present. And Mm -hmm. I did that once. And then that was horrible. That was enough. But I do listen to the podcast. Well, first of all, because I'm editing it. (laughs) Yeah. Editing. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. Well, I asked just like an hour or two ago in the Facebook group, what are some things you overthink and overanalyze? So I thought it was kind of interesting, the uh, different responses. And most of it is about what people think of us and Mm -hmm. if they were offended by something we said. So Ashley McIntosh said what people think of me or if they were offended with something I did or said. Hmm. And Kayla Hyde said, this is me every time I leave the house. (laughs) So I think she has that trouble all the time. And it's funny when I was reading through this, through these, because I I know a lot of them Mm -hmm. and I would have never thought that about Kayla. She's, you know, she's funny and sweet and Mm -hmm. maybe, maybe it depends on the kind of attitude we have towards people. And if you expect that they're going to be sweet and kind and nice, and you're not waiting for someone to be rude and ugly, then you're not going to think that of them. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So uh, Holly Smith says packing for a trip. She overanalyzes packing for a trip, which I think that's awesome because, you know, that's not going to hurt anybody. That's just going to be an incidental thing. If you get something, Yeah, yeah, being prepared. Um, and several people chimed in with that. A lot of people did. This is more than I've seen since I last looked at it. Um, (laughs) Zephyr Williamson said, every conversation I have after I have it. (laughs) Yeah. And then someone Uh, else chimed in and said, every conversation for days, mm. which is sad. And someone else, Kaylee McKee said, everything. And then a lot of people said, me too, me too, me too. Team everything here. Hmm. Um, Job insecurities. Someone else said everything. Salisha Grider said people's intentions. And then she followed up a few minutes later. And now I am overthinking giving just (laughs) one answer. (laughs) Uh, Maury Best said my weight. You know, we, we overanalyze hmm. things like that, how we look and how, how something fits us or makeup or hair, whatever. Mm -hmm. Melissa McCullough said the list is long. And uh, Tila Wren said what I did or didn't say, or what I should have said for days after the conversation was over. And then several people said, yep, same thing. Julie Gibbs said, oh yes, I'm capable of remembering and overanalyzing conversations from years ago that I wish I had responded to differently. That's the truth. Mm -hmm. Um, so Edie Kozort said, overthinking about health in the future. 
Uh, it puts her on edge because of, she has a chronic illness. So she's worried about what's next. Renee Grimsley said, inviting friends over. Yeah, I have that on my list because I was See thinking, <clears throat> well, in what way? I, before they get here, I'm thinking what to fix. What are we going to do? Because I want there to be a natural flow. I like for there to be a starting point and like a natural end. We're going to eat, we're going to play a game, we're going to, you know, or we're going to sing a few songs or we're all going to, you know, whatever. I like for there to be a progression. So there's no time for awkwardness. And, and then afterwards, when I'm cleaning up, I'm thinking back over it. A lot of times Neil and I are talking about how do you think that went, you know, did they seem comfortable? Did they seem to have a good time? You know, all that stuff. And really, I should just, I don't know if that comes across, like, does that stress or worry come across to my guests and keep me from being just you know whatever happens happens I just want people to be warm and happy here (laughs) well instead I have to plan it all out and think it all through and but that to me is being intentional and and thinking ahead of time which is good yeah I think that's a good thing as long as everything goes according to plan and if it doesn't what happens right that's what I have to work on oh well okay so Rachel McCarty said do they really like me did I make them mad? <laughs> Katie Balance said, if I'm doing enough for others, how I make others feel if I'm forgetting something or someone. So, you know, we have a lot of um, concerns about mm-hmm. things that are, even if they're in our control, in or mm-hmm. out of our control, we overthink things and overanalyze things. And it made me think of um, an article that Christy Huntsman wrote a while back. And it was funny because I couldn't remember exactly what it was called, but I I remembered it was an article she wrote for come fill your cup and that there, the word awkward was in her article. So Um, when I searched on come fill your cup, I just typed in Christy Huntsman awkward. (laughs) So (laughs) Christy, I don't know if, if you listen to this, if you somehow are able to see the different searches that come up on come fill your cup, that's why that's there. But There's an article that she wrote and it's about uh, how she felt like she overthought things. And she, she had had a friend that I I didn't want to read the whole thing. So I'll see if I can kind of summarize. She'd had a friend that they had texted back and forth and they were encouraging one another to try to kind of keep, keep house better and, and to Mm -hmm. clean up and do things like that. And her friend had, told her that she'd kind of had a good day doing whatever cleaning her sink. I don't remember what it was. And so she, Christy went and bought this soap to give to her. And she put a little bow on it, a little note on it that said, you're doing great. And she was going to run it over to her house. And then she said, she got to the driveway of this woman's house and she sat there for a minute. She thought, am I being stupid? Is this a terrible gift? Why would any, this is kind of dumb. Why am I doing this? Which to me is how in the world could she have thought that was dumb, but this is what Mm -hmm. she wrote. She said, I wanted so much to be an encourager. I wanted to be the one who said or did the right thing that could brighten someone else's day. However, I recognized that on so many occasions I had allowed my disease of overthinking to paralyze my actions. Mm -hmm. Upon this realization, I decided to visit with my friend, Jennifer, who is one of the biggest encouragers I'd ever met. I recounted my story of the soap and described the fact that I was so worried about how people would respond to me that I could not bring myself to do and say many of the things I wanted. She looked me straight in the eye and said, but it's not about you, is it? Eight years later, I can still hear these words echoing in my head. She was right. I had made the entire endeavor about myself. How would these things affect me? What would these people think of me? What would happen to me? The answer was simple. Get over myself and decide to just be weird. If I do 100 things to lift others up and a few people think I'm an odd duck, which I am, by the way, who cares? I've encouraged (laughs) so many others over and over again. Scripture echoes this sentiment. Just be weird. Peter calls us aliens and strangers reminding us that we shouldn't look like the rest of the world. And so she just goes on to say, Mm, yeah, that's good that. Yeah, it, it, we, it's all, we make it all about us when, when we are overthinking things Mm -hmm. and it's pretty self-centered, isn't it? Well, and really overthink all of these things that we're talking about overreacting, overthinking. I was just making a note, by the way, Mm -hmm. to share that 
link to her article yeah. in the show notes too, not yeah. just in the Facebook page. So that's mm-hmm. what I was doing. Okay. But that not that the solution to all these things though? If you're overthinking, overreacting, over get over yourself. Mm-hmm. And you have a Bible marking that's get over yourself. And I yeah. think we may have shared it before, but it would be good to share it again because okay. it's not, everything is not about us. And I, I don't think not. anybody, <laughs> I hate to break it to you, but it's not. What? Yeah. Ah. But we just spend so much time thinking about how other people are going to think and feel about us. And Mm -hmm. if we could just turn that around and Mm -hmm. shower that, I don't want to say shower that obsessive thinking on other people, but just focus on, on others and welcoming others and encouraging others. Well, and didn't I, before we hit record, share something with you that I was worried about. And I said, I don't feel adequate to the task. And like, you know, and you said, but it's not about you. Probably because I had and, just read that article. Yeah, and you were you were right. Well, but it's a it's also about being in control of our thoughts too. That's something mm-hmm. that came up, and and that's really hard to do. Is to, and I don't even know how how to do it. I think it comes naturally for some people to just stop thinking that way. Just mm-hmm. stop it and redirect your thinking. But there were several passages that came up when I was thinking about this, but second Corinthians 10, five, that talks about, I got that one. You already got it. Do you have it written down or memorized where you can say I have it written down. I don't have it memorized. Can you, can you say it then? Yeah. Second Corinthians 10, five, take every thought captive and make it obedient to Christ. Oh, I like that version. Mm -hmm. Make it obedient to Christ. Mm -hmm. So how do we do that? No, I just read the verse. You're supposed to, <laughs> You're supposed to talk about it. <laughs> yeah. Well, t- well don't let your thoughts run away with you is mm-hmm. what I thought of because he says, take every thought captive. And, you know, you're, you're feeding that <clears throat> self-absorption when you're overthinking things sometimes and feeding it. That's a good way of putting it. Not over, not overthinking everything is bad or overanalyzing is bad because you need to think and analyze, but we're talking about this obsessive, not being able to let it go thing. And, and Paul says, take every thought captive, which makes me think that we have to be intentional about it and to recognize it when it's happening and then take control and yeah not let our thoughts run away from us and instead turn that in a way that's productive for Christ and mm-hmm. for others. I had to go to the doctor yesterday. It was just a checkup, but uh, I hate you. You and I've talked about this before. I hate going to the doctor. Mm-hmm. I don't know why. And I don't go very often. It's, you know, how they always say that men, women will go to the doctor for everything and men will not. Well, it's just the same, the opposite for John and me. He'll go to the doctor easily. He doesn't, it doesn't bother him. But for all the doctors who are listening, we love you. Oh, absolutely. (laughs) What doctor's listening? (laughs) (laughs) And I really do like our doctor a lot. Yeah. But there's just something I get white coat syndrome and and my blood Mm -hmm. pressure, which is already tends to be high. Whenever they take it at the doctor's office, I, I'm like, I promise it's not this high at home because I take it every night before bed. I take my blood pressure oh. just to, and I uh, write down the results. And, and when I get there, it's like 30 points higher because I'm nervous wow. about it. Yeah. yeah, it is. And my point is before I go, I'm so nervous and I'm just like thinking what, what, and what, what if they find something wrong? What if there's something serious wrong, but what if, what if, what if, you know, and what if this hurts or so then I kind of have to like slap myself around a little bit and say, play that. What if game? Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, what if they do find something wrong? Well, I'm going to the doctor and they'll be able to help me with it. Mm-hmm. Well, what if it hurts? Well, what? so what it's not, <laughs> I think I'm going to live through it probably. And if not, you know, what if there is something really wrong? And I I have a hope that if that really is taking it way down the road, but I just realize how ridiculous I'm being Mm -hmm. and that helps to calm me down just to kind of play that game. Well, what if, well, then this will happen. What if that happens? Well, then this will happen. To me, that's a little bit of that taking things captive, taking my thoughts captive and not just Mm -hmm. letting them run away with me because otherwise it's just, 
this vicious cycle of nerves and, and just silly things that I'm thinking about that. I, I just really have no business letting my mind go there. And then if you do let your thoughts run away from you, a lot of the things that it leads to aren't good. And you mm-hmm. mentioned worry and some of those things that the lady shared in answer to your question, they all sounded, a lot of them sounded like worries, things yeah. that we worry about, but also <clears throat> doubt, mm-hmm. you know, and when we start questioning or overanalyzing things, it can lead to doubt. It can lead to fear. Yeah. Um, and which is kind of what you were talking about with your doctor's visits, you know, so that's why it's important to talk about it and learn how to manage it, especially if you already have that tendency. And it sounds like a lot of us do. Yeah, Yeah, I think so. Even if it's about different things, you know, maybe it's not about physical things. Maybe it's Mm -hmm. more about the, you know, what people think of us, you know, we just all, I think we all have a lot of things that we struggle with in that area. Um, I found Psalm 94, 19. Did you have that one? Uh Uh-uh. When my anxious thoughts multiply within me, your comforts delight my soul. Yeah. I've heard you quote that before. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love that one. Can you say it again? When you're, when my anxious thoughts multiply within me and I just think about compounding Mm -hmm. them, you know, Uh overthinking your comforts delight my soul. So turning Mm -hmm. to God, turning to the word, Yeah, you know fill in his peace. Yeah. You know, think about Philippians four, six, and seven, fill it with his peace instead of being anxious. Mm -hmm. And I did, I had that one written down Philippians four, four through nine. And that, um, it, John uses that a lot when he's Mm -hmm. talking about counseling situations and, and how we can really help matters by praying, right. Thinking, right. And living, right. Mm -hmm. And it, it may sound a little bit simplistic, but it really does have a lot of, a lot of, uh, effective ways of dealing with worry, which kind of mm-hmm. overthinking, overanalyzing is, but verse four says to rejoice and that's intentional. Mm-hmm. So I think we can redirect our minds from that over, over critical, overanalyzing uh, thoughts and rejoice. And then he says to be anxious for nothing. And this really is, it's all about being anxious, but in everything by prayer and supplication with Thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And then the peace of God will guard your hearts. But then he goes on and talks about the things to to think about the things that are true, honorable, right, pure, lovely, of -hmm. good repute. If there's any excellence and anything worthy of praise, he says, dwell on these Mm -hmm. things. So we're dwelling on silly things. What Mm -hmm. ifs? And when I look at that list, things that are true, things that are honorable and right, lovely. So all of those things, what, what we put into our minds, that's what comes out. And I know we've talked about that before too, Mm -hmm. what spills out of you when you're squeezed. Mm -hmm. So what are we putting in our minds? Is it things that are true? and right and noble and of good report. And, you know, those are just so important. I think about some of the movies that we watch and I, I, you know, I don't want to be critical of people that like to watch scary movies, but I just can't, I know, but no, I'm talking about the kinds that are just really not good for your mind. Cause I, you know, we talked about the sixth sense and that was, that's suspenseful. Yeah but the gory stuff. Yeah. I don't like slasher movies. Yeah. That, because to me, that's putting things into your mind that just don't really need to be there Mm -hmm. and it's not going to help you. So I really like Philippians four. I thought of that that verse too, because that list is so long Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) that if you're spending your time just trying to accomplish that, you're not going to have room in your mind for all these other things that we're fretting about and worrying about. And what is going to happen if you let it go? And you just stop overthinking what's going to happen. Is it going to, you know, is continuing to overthink it change? Is it going to change anything? Is Is it it going to help anything? No, no, you can just let it go. We can just let it go. And I was thinking about um, as a solution, maybe think about what's at the root of it. For me personally, I know it's my pride Mm. and I really struggle with that. 
it and this need for things to go right and um, to, you know, to be perfect and to, you know, I want my lesson to be perfect. I want everything to be smooth. I want, and so when I'm overthinking about it later, is it because I have this need, a prideful need to be perfect? Um, do you care too much about what other people think of you? You know, a lot of this stuff goes back to our impressions that we leave on people and, or what they might think of us. And neither one of those things are great motives for life. Yeah. And, and so maybe figuring out what, what's at the root of that overthinking can help us address it. That's interesting. I had not thought about how pride would be connected with this. To me, I think mine is more, or it can be more of a lack of faith maybe. Mm -hmm. And, and not having the right things in my mind the right motives, maybe, I don't know, but you're right. Mm -hmm. Getting to the root of what's causing it is challenging. And it's, it, that's a, that's a good use of time is figuring out what, what's behind it. Um, well, have you ever, um, you know, you misspeak and sometimes you, you never know it until you go back, like on the podcast, mm -hmm. I've already caught myself. I don't catch it when it happens, but when I go back and listen, I misspoke. I don't know what I thought I was saying in my head, but it didn't come right out, you know, or I turned words, you know, you just do things like that. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just a tiny little thing. And I'm going, I just slow down, be intentional with your words. What's the matter with you? Think things through, you know, and really it's just not a big deal. <laughs> yeah. You know, who cares? And so that's what I'm talking about. It's like this whole pride thing of why can't I just get it right? Why <laughs> Why do I have to, why do, when I meet people smart, I, do I sound like an idiot all of a sudden when I'm talking to them, <laughs> you know, yeah. that kind of stuff. It's a pride thing. Yeah. It's a pride thing for me, for me. I'm not talking about anybody else. I'm talking about me. Well, I know that's, that's what, I know that's what it is. But everybody has to think about what, what's at the root of it for them. Mm -hmm. um, well, I just lost my train of thought and I'll <laughs> overthink that later. Don't let your thoughts run away from you. <laughs> oh, I know what it was. I was just thinking, I think that everyone else gives more grace to us than we give ourselves. Yes. So true. Because mm -hmm. I can honestly tell you that I, you know, thinking, looking back or listening back to a podcast, there might be something that one of us misspeaks. And if, if it's you, I don't think anything of it. Mm -hmm. In fact, I probably don't even notice it. And so in that sense, I see what you're saying about pride because we're focusing on ourselves rather than other people. But I, like I said, I think we give other people grace more than we give ourselves. Yeah. And you said, I'm it's just dawning on me as we're having this conversation. You said something about signs of overthinking is not being in the moment in a conversation, you know, emotionally. Mm -hmm. I said, I don't think I do that. Well, <laughs> but when I go back and listen to the podcast to upload it, Sometimes you say things and I think, I, I don't remember hearing her say that. Same, same and, here. And it must be because I was already either thinking about what I was going to say next or how to segue into the next thing instead of focusing on what you were saying. But that yeah. happens. I'm but like, we have to do that some. So I'm, I'm giving you grace here because I do but, the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's really interesting. I didn't hear that the first time. <laughs> <laughs> Oh boy. Okay. That's okay. So stuff. another, another verse that I did think about was Romans 12, uh, one and two, and he says, mm -hmm. by the mercies of God, present your bodies a living and holy sacrifice and do not be conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind mm -hmm. to prove the will of God is what the will of God is. So how do you renew your mind? Mm -hmm. yeah, Go you ahead. How do you renew verse. your mind? You, you came up with that verse. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I do love about that verse though? This isn't answering your question. Okay, it's just give me some time to think verse. about. Yes, I will stall. Um, the part <laughs> about uh, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Mm -hmm. And I did a study on that one time and really came to understand it to be saying that when you do uh, transform yourself, you know, not conform, but do the will of God, transform yourself, present your body's living sacrifice. When you do these things, you're proving to yourself that God's way 
is good and acceptable and perfect. Mm. And it's because it says that so that you may prove, you know, mm-hmm. what is it? I mean, um, so that you may prove what the, will what of is God that? Is. Yeah. So that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Well, you're proving to yourself by living it out. You're seeing it come to fruition that God's way is best. You're proving to yourself that his, that perfect will of God is perfect for you. It's good for you. It's, it's, you know, proving yeah. to yourself by living it out. Yeah, that's good. Well, I guess with, with renewing your mind, I think of training your mind and, and that's intentional. We use that word a lot being intentional, but I think that's what Christian life is, is being intentional about our thoughts, our actions, our words, our Mm -hmm. motives, but it's not instant. You know, it's something that we, we grow into. And, and so training your mind, like a physical training, it's, it's a, a daily thing that we put time and work into. And so if we're overthinking or overanalyzing or worrying about something, then we decide I'm not going to be that way. And we start training our minds to think, you know, maybe when, when we have this thought about ourselves, did I say that wrong? Are they going to think badly of me? Then we tell ourselves, okay, I'm going to think of something good about myself or something good that I did in this situation, or, Mm -hmm. um, you know, just, it's a redirecting, redirecting of our Mm -hmm. thoughts. Well, and Christianity is so much about renewal, you know, the new mm-hmm. walk, the new life, getting rid of the old man and the old ways, being dead to self, rise to walk in newness of life and mm-hmm. renewing our minds. And I think your word intention there is, is so perfect for this whole topic is mm-hmm. instead of um, feeding that cycle, because it kind of becomes a habit, doesn't it, mm-hmm. of overanalyzing everything. And it's exhausting. Yeah, it's wearying and exhausting and we're not doing ourselves any favors and being intentional about breaking that habit instead renewing our minds by that list of good things to be thinking about or turning it to praise or turning it to a gratitude or, you know, something good about somebody else taking the focus off of ourselves or just, you know what, get over yourself. <laughs> well, and that- maybe, you, maybe you actually really did mess up. Yeah. And maybe you did say something thoughtless, you know, and, and you might need to spend some time thinking about it, but then get over it and move on. And how many learn, times have learn you, from it? How many times have you gone to someone? I know I've done this and said, I feel so bad about what I said. Mm-hmm. And they go, huh? Yeah. What are you talking about? I never thought anything of it. And I think mm-hmm. probably nine times out of 10, what we're worried about that we said or did or whatever, they didn't think a thing of it. Mm -hmm. And if they did, you know, maybe, maybe they're the ones with the problem. What is that saying? Those who, those who mind don't matter. And those who matter don't mind. Yes. I don't want to say that nobody matters, but there's some people that are going to be offended no matter what you say or do. And you just Mm kind of have to move beyond that and not worry so much about it. Yeah. Yeah. But Anyway, I, I think the thing that really smacked me in the face think, thinking about all this is that it's not about me. Everything's not about me. And so when I start over analyzing, overthinking things, I'm going to have to tell myself, it's not about you, mm-hmm. you know, try to do better and, and move on with it. And so, really what a relief that should be. Yeah. You no know, kidding. take the, take the pressure off yourself, take the burden off yourself. It's not about you. It's about the God who's at work in you. It's up yeah. you'll say before. And that should be relieving. Yeah. It's not about you. It's about the God in you. That's Mm -hmm. good. So there was one other thing. We've got a couple of other uh, overthinking over. Anyway, well, we have another couple of overs to talk Mm -hmm. about, but I wanted to read a couple of things that um, I thought it was interesting. John Piper had an essay about overthinking. And one of the things that he said to do to stop doing it is to look up, which I thought, well, yeah. And he said, uh, the Bible directs our thoughts outward, outward, mm-hmm. away from subjectivism and away from introspection to the right comprehension of great and glorious things. And sometimes he has big words and I have to read them three or four times, but I like that though. Great. and yeah, glorious. Yeah. So the Bible directs our thoughts outward away from subjectivism and away from introspection, which, you know, introspection's mm-hmm. just always thinking inwardly 
to the right comprehension of great and glorious things. So, I mean, for Christians, we have so much, so many blessings to think about and, and look at and consider. And so if we're, again, if we think about who wants us to be inward, who wants us to, um, to always be self-doubting and, and self-absorbed with thoughts. And really that's Mm -hmm. what this is. It's the devil. You know, he wants us to be involved Mm -hmm. in self. And so that makes me mad. Anytime I think about the devil, want me to do something that makes me mad, want to not do it. And us falling for it. Right. And not realizing that we're the ones that crack the door open for him to get Mm -hmm. in. Yeah. Yeah. So he also said, in other words, stop standing in front of the mirror and worrying about your hair and whatever you're all worked up about, but get over to the window and look out and then look up. Yeah. And Mm -hmm. he talks about Philippians four also. And then, and then he quotes Colossians three, which is our theme verse, if you will. Mm -hmm. So he says, if you want to do something right with your mind and your thinking, put it on things that are true, put it on things that are above put it on things that are Christ's, put it on Christ himself. I thought that was just so great. That's really good. Yeah. So overthinking and (laughs) overanalyzing. I have one more thing. Okay. On that. I was trying to think of the solution type stuff. And the Mm -hmm. the last thing was uh, um, embracing the sense of humor. Yeah. You know, because I think that will keep us from getting so caught up or wrapped up in worry about us and what we're said or did or how we're coming across, you know, learn to laugh at yourself and have a sense of humor about it. And instead Isn't that of so attractive on so people. Much, yeah. Yeah. I think it's that I'm drawn to people that can laugh at themselves mm-hmm. instead of taking themselves so seriously. Yes. And it makes everybody else more comfortable too. you know, think about the scenario that I shared about overthinking when somebody comes over for dinner, because I want everything to go so just right. Well, Mm -hmm. if I'm giving off those kinds of vibes, you know, that's stressful and nobody relaxes. And then if something does go wrong, I burn the bread um, or whatever happens, you know, then I'm just stressed about it Mm -hmm. instead of having that ability to just laugh it off, you know, it happens, have a sense of humor about it. And so that everybody can be comfortable. And then it's just a fun memory later instead of, yeah. You know, that was awkward. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes those things are the funniest things to look back at. Hey, remember when I said that? And, you know, yeah. you've got this foot shaped hole where your yeah. mouth is, where you're pulling your foot out of your mouth. Well, I think of a visual of two people responding to the same thing and it's tripping and falling. You know, nobody's getting hurt in this visual. But one person gets up and they dust themselves off and they're, they're laughing about it. You know, mm-hmm. what a klutz I am, you know, um, you know, that was hilarious or whatever. And they go on their way. The other person is absolutely mortified. Yeah. And you can see it in their complete body response. You know, their face turns red and they, they might start crying or they might get all flustered and aggravated and just want to leave. You know, it's, mm-hmm. it was an accident Yeah. or maybe, you know, <laughs> clumsiness. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> but you can respond and look how those separate responses would affect other people that mm-hmm. witnessed it. The one that laughed, everybody is comfortable and can laugh with them or at them. At them, yeah. The one that's all embarrassed and yeah. and what you know, do you do? Yeah, and then it's like you know, you it just affects everybody. So that's a great analogy. That I think that will help. Me. Humor. Yeah, I think that'll help if this I'm. If, when this comes up again with me, (laughs) yeah, did I ever tell you, I know I put a picture of my, when I put that, my boots, a picture of my boots and I said I had a scar on my knee. Yes. Did I ever tell you about that? I don't don't remember. Yeah. Start telling me this, start telling this story and I'll tell you. (laughs) Well, it was Jordan and Jacob's coach. I don't think I told you. It doesn't sound So anyway, I had, I had gone to the, the high school to pick one of the boys up and I had parked the car and then I was walking across to go to the gym for whatever reason. And they have this coach and we're still in contact with him. He's a young man. Well, he's probably in, yeah, he's still young. He's still young because he's younger than me and I'm still young. Mm -hmm. So he was across on the other side of the street and there was two curbs between me and him. And I was walking towards him and I just stepped off the curb wrong and landed 
a face planted in the street. Oh, yeah. Gosh. And uh, gosh. popped back up. You know, you know how you pop up. Oh, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. And you got blood dripping down your leg. So I had blood dripping down my leg and I'm trying to oh. wipe it up and trying to, you know, and I see him and he could tell that I was okay, but I could see his face and he was, could see his mouth. I'm, I'm doing it, but if you're listening, you can't tell, but he was, he was fighting so Try hard not, not to, to laugh. laugh at me. <laughs> and finally I said, just laugh. It's funny. It's funny. Okay. Just laugh. So we both busted out laughing and and uh, every time I look at my knee now and see that scar, I think about that. So, yeah. So you have a permanent reminder. So you handled yeah. it well. Yeah, you handled it with else. a sense of humor. I didn't know how else to handle it. So, but it was funny and it's a little bit embarrassing when I look back on it, but yeah. <laughs> okay. So that's overanalyzing, overthinking, but we're also wanting to talk about overreacting. Yes. You, you don't ever overreact about anything, do you? Only with certain people. <laughs> <laughs> what certain people are those? Well, we don't need to call names on this episode. Okay. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh no, I would, I would dearly love to say that this isn't a problem for me, but in in very recent times, and not even with my certain people, mm-hmm. I reacted to something that should not have been a big deal, and I kind of. It was one of those things where I kind of, the more I thought about it, the more I was like, well, you know, just feeding that aggravation. And mm-hmm. so you overthought about it. Indignation. You to overreact about it. I mm-hmm. overreacted and my, and my indignation grew and I really should have, it's that whole, it's to his glory to overlook an offense mm-hmm. verse, you know, that it was one of those moments. So, yeah, yes. I, I try to think if I have a problem with this overreacting, I'm sure I do with John. Yeah, I'm sure I do with Neil. Because, you know, we're just comfortable with them and we know that they're going to love us regardless of whether or not we overreact. But mm-hmm. um, I don't know. I probably do. If I, I say I do. don't, you might look at me like you did when I said I don't have a problem. Yeah, with you can say that I agree with you. I don't think that you have a problem with this. At least I've so, never seen I've never seen it. You seem to be very like under pressure, calm kind of a person. Well, inside, I guess maybe there's an exterior overreacting and an interior. Oh yeah. And in my scenario, I didn't, I didn't overreact. It was interior. It was, yeah, it it bothered me and it shouldn't have. And it bothered me later on and it shouldn't have. Well, did you work through it? Mm -hmm. Well, like how, without having to go into the details, did you just have to (laughs) think about it or pray about it. I, I had to pray about it. I had to realize that I was really making a big deal. Of, and I was really feeling my own notes about a situation yeah. and I should have just let it go. Yeah. Hmm. Now you got me curious. Well, I'll share it with you later. Okay. <laughs> but I was thinking, what are some of the things that we overreact to? It could be a situation with a person, you know, mm-hmm. something happens, but I was thinking about frustrations. Yeah. You know, when things don't go the way they should, or there's hiccups uh, Mm -hmm. in the plan, or things don't happen as fast as you want them to, Um, you know, just, I mean, that's life. And yesterday, was that yesterday? Yes. Uh, I had planted some more seeds out in the far side of the herb garden, and we have changed hoses. And so I was dragging the hose all the way out there, and it wouldn't reach. And even when I turned the hose on, it, the water wouldn't go as far as I needed to. And we had changed out that hose because the garden, the hose head on the other one was busted. And so we switched hoses. Well, now this one has a better head, but it's not long enough and it doesn't reach the garden. And I'm sharing, there's a point to this. Okay. Story. <laughs> <laughs> You're getting there. Um, this was after having worked outside for a good while. And I was getting tired. And so by the time that I'm trying to, I just need to water these seeds that I've just put in the ground. And so I can get cleaned up and be done. And the hose doesn't reach. And for whatever reason, I'm going, really? Ah! You know, and I'm trying to <laughs> spray it up in the air and hoping the wind will, and it doesn't. And in my mind, I'm going, I am sick and tired of not having the right tools when I need them. <laughs> and it was just ridiculous. Okay. But to me, that's an example. You know, was that an overreaction much? Uh, yes. 
<laughs> and I met Neil for lunch and I was like, the garden hose won't reach my herb garden. <laughs> if you do your head like that, it might, yeah, I know. Well, and then I, you know, cause at the time Neil said, did you not just trade it out with the other one? And I was like, I couldn't unscrew it. I tried. <laughs> <laughs> then he says well did you use a wrench <laughs> no yeah and I'm just going what is your problem <laughs> yeah I am in my the problem. grand scheme of all that's going on in the world mm -hmm. my garden hose won't reach <laughs> yeah so, reality check yeah, that was an overreact. That's just a trivial example of something that just happened yesterday, you know? Yeah. Well, I do. It seems like when I have episodes like that, if I overreact about something, I get my legs cut out from under me later when I realize I was just wrong. Mm -hmm. And I'm sitting here trying to think of examples and I can't think of a specific one, but I know like I, I keep a, a measuring tape in a specific place in my drawer so that I will know where that measuring tape is when mm -hmm. I need it. Mm -hmm. And that someone way. that lives in my house that shall remain nameless. Okay. Sometimes will come and take that measuring tape and carry it somewhere else. And that someone will not return it to that certain place. Mm -hmm. This is so insignificant, you know, but it was, it's annoying to me when I can't find what I know I put it back, but that other person mm -hmm. does not put it back. And so I may or may not go and say, where is my measuring tape? Why isn't it in the drawer? And that person will say, I don't know where the measuring tape is. Mm -hmm. And then pretty soon I go find it where I left it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oopsie. That's happened more than once. Oh no. So a lot of times we <laughs> overreact about things that come back and bite us, you know? Yes. Because oh, that's a good example. You know, we're, we're mm -hmm. dumb and we, we, I guess overreaction in my mind is a lack of mental control mm -hmm. and we really need to rein it in and get control. Mm -hmm. And I think if we have a reputation, I was thinking about this, if we have a reputation for overreacting, are people going to come to us with concerns? You know, are they going to trust us with their thoughts and their hearts and their feelings? And I don't think so. Well, I even don't. Knowing there are times when people need to share hard things. Mm -hmm that might disappoint you or hurt you, or maybe you need correction. Yeah. And they're not going to want to do that if we have a tendency to overreact over dumb things and yeah. trivial things. And when you say you're saying that, it's making me think back in parenting. And this is not the season of life that you and I are in, but mm -hmm. that was a big deal back when we had teenagers and thinking about things that yeah. are going on in their lives. And if we overreact, they're not going to tell us. Mm -hmm. Or they're not going to feel like they can confess things or confide in us if we overreact about them. So I'm glad you said that because I hadn't really even thought about that. But I know that there are a lot of people in that season right now that are raising children and just really have to have that mental control mm -hmm. because kids can make you angry and they can do dumb things and we have to be in control and not overreact. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And some other situations we might overreact when things don't meet our expectations mm -hmm. and measure up or, um, a big one for me is fear. Yeah. So, um, you know, you think about, I think you've even shared this example before of somebody not being home when they're supposed to, mm -hmm. and that's fear. You react, you overreact mm -hmm. when, when they're finally safe or okay, but, but you usually react in anger. Yeah. You know, and a lot of these things, it seems like in all of these situations, overreacting usually looks like anger. Mm -hmm. And regardless of what led to it or what was at the root of it, and that's never good. And it looks like we went in the same direction because the verses that I jotted down had to do with ruling your spirit, controlling mm -hmm. your emotions. But what you just said again, and you said it when we were talking about overanalyzing is get to the root of it. Mm -hmm. So getting to the root of why you're overreacting is maybe a way to prevent it and think about it mm -hmm. before it happens and to prevent it from happening. Um, yeah. Are you hungry? <laughs> <laughs> Do you need a snack? Yeah. What are those? The Snickers commercials? <laughs> yeah. Do you need a Snickers? Do you need a Snickers? 
Yeah, you'll turn into somebody nicer if you have a and well, Do chocolate. You need makes... to keep some beef jerky in your pocket. <laughs> I'll get a little linty <laughs> if you put beef jerky in your pocket. In a wrapper, Carla. Okay. <laughs> is there such a thing as individually wrapped beef jerky? I've yes. never seen it. There is? Yeah. Well, I guess I'm thinking the little indi- the individual portions that come in okay. those little packs. And then there's beef sticks. Yeah. Okay. All right. We digress. We digress. <laughs> Good to know though. So uh, I thought about Proverbs 423 that says, watch over your heart with all diligence for from it flow the springs of life. Mm-hmm. And it's a heart issue. That's yes. Overreacting is a heart issue. So and a tough verse though, a tough yeah. challenge. Yeah. Yeah. Watch over. Uh, I might need to look into that a little bit closer. What does it mean to watch over your heart? Is well, it like and, guarding and- your heart? And who is it telling to watch over your heart? Is that a question for me? Yeah. It's, it's you. Yeah. It's, it's you. It's your, you're accountable. You're, you're, I have to watch over my own heart. It's not anybody else's responsibility. As much as I would like to blame some circumstance or some person for my overreaction. Yeah. It's all, it's my responsibility. I have to rule my own heart. That when I wrote that down, Proverbs 423, I put, I wrote down, stop giving frustration a place in my heart. Mm -hmm. So again, there's that intentionality of, of um, thinking about it ahead of time before it, before we get to that place and stop giving frustration that place. Also mm-hmm. not controlling the thoughts of my heart. Um, I wrote down Proverbs 16, 32, which says. I have that one too. Do you have it memorized? No, but I have it written down. Whoever is slow to anger is better than the mighty. And he who rules his spirit than he who takes a city. Isn't that the truth? Mm-hmm. James mm-hmm. talks about the tongue. Mm-hmm. So there's lots of, and I guess overreacting doesn't necessarily always come out in words. It comes out in our body language. Yeah. <laughs> oh. yeah. <laughs> That's probably more <laughs> facial, facial expressions. Mm-hmm. Uh, looking out the window, shall we say? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Body yeah. language. Mm-hmm. Uh, Proverbs 12, 16, the vexation, okay. which I think is a great word. The vexation of a fool is known at once. (laughs) Mm. And vexation is annoyance or frustration. Yeah. So when when you have no trouble letting people know that you're annoyed. And then Proverbs 29, 11. um, I feel like I need this one just branded. (laughs) Mm. Branded on somewhere. Proverbs 29, 11. a A fool gives vent. Let me start again. A fool gives full vent to his spirit, yeah. but a wise quietly holds it back. Yeah. So, so it takes wisdom, mm-hmm. wisdom to decide what words work will come out of your mouth, what thoughts will enter your head and what mm-hmm. actions will pour out of your heart. And I think this verse to me is, is a challenge, but also a consolation because you're going to feel those things. Sometimes we're trying to renew our minds and we're trying to be intentional, but things are going to happen and we are going to feel frustrated and aggravated or angry. And mm-hmm. this verse tells me that our spirit is going to feel those things, but we just make the choice not to give vent to them, not to yeah. give full vent to them, but quietly hold it back. Mm-hmm. And so, but to me, that's kind of an assurance is it's normal and human to feel those things and to respond that way, maybe emotionally off the bat, but what you do with those feelings and is, is what's on us. That's the guarding our heart part. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. Uh, Galatians 5, 16 and following, but I say walk by the spirit and you'll not carry out the desire of the flesh. Mm. So if we're spiritual, the things Mm -hmm. that we want we won't we won't do them we won't give vent to them for the flesh sets its desire against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh so it's this constant battle Mm -hmm. and and like you say i think that's not ever going to end 
maybe Mm -hmm. at some point it gets easier. And I think it does. It's maturity, not Mm -hmm. just physical maturity, but spiritual maturity as we grow. Um, And the spiritual is what he mentioned earlier mm -hmm. in Galatians about the fruit of the spirit looking like love, joy, peace, Mm -hmm. patience, gentleness, self-control, you know, those things that we're trying to fill our heart with which again, pushes out some of these other things. Yeah. Think about Paul when he, he said the things that I would do, I don't do. And the things that I don't want to do, I do. Mm -hmm. So obviously it's just a human. It's part Mm -hmm. of the humanness that we're a wretched man that I am. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So I think if he can battle it, uh, if he has issues with it, it's natural that we are going to be too. My New Testament one is Second Peter 1, 5 through 9, that list of mm-hmm. Christian graces that we are trying to grow in and mm-hmm. add to our faith. And one of them is self-control. And at the end of that passage, he says, whoever lacks these qualities is so nearsighted that he is blind. Hmm. So I think nearsighted. about self-control. Yeah. If you're not, if you're not working on self-control, we can't even see it ourselves, Yeah, you know, and that's that's a sobering thought. It is. Uh, I was thinking too about uh, Ephesians four. He starts off the chapter saying, therefore, I, the prisoner of the Lord implore you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling with which you've been called. And then he says, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, showing tolerance for one another in love. And that's all about not overreacting. I mean, it's more than about overreacting, but, Mm -hmm. but remembering walking in a manner that's worthy of the calling that we've been called showing, showing that we understand the value of what Christ did for us. Mm -hmm. And we're going to overreact about what? Exactly. No, the garden hose. (laughs) Oh, I'm going (laughs) to say that. (laughs) You know, it struck me about this when, um, this topic was your idea and I loved mm-hmm. it, but you said something about overthinking or over, overreacting, overdoing, over, you know, all these over words. And I was thinking, am I going to be able to find some verses on that? Yeah. You know, initially and in no time at all, you know, surprise, surprise, the Bible always has the solution. It mm-hmm. always has the answer. And so many verses apply to these things that we're talking about. And I'm so yeah. grateful for that. Yeah. Well, because it's, it's applicable always in every situation Mm -hmm. in our life. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, what about overdoing things? Okay. Let's talk about that. Okay. I want to listen and you tell me. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I'm curious if we've, if we've gone in the same direction with this, because we didn't talk about it before. That's true. I was thinking, go ahead. No, you go ahead. No, you go ahead. No, No, you you go ahead. I was thinking about, um, over committing ourselves okay. to the point that we, it affects our spirit and how we react with others or mm-hmm. how we can enjoy or not enjoy Christian service. Yeah. Um, because we're always so tired. Mm-hmm. Every time somebody asks, how are you? Yeah, you know, I'm so tired. I'm so stressed. I'm so busy. How's your week been? Busy, busy, yeah. busy, you know, and that's all people ever hear. Yeah. from us. And first of all, nobody wants to hear that. It's not a badge of honor. Yeah. It's not a Christian badge of honor to be overworked to the point of being stressed. You're stepping on my toes. I'm stepping on my toes, Carla, because how easy it is, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, and to me, that's what I went to with something like overdoing it. It's hard to be present in the moment. Yeah. It's hard to be in the moment. It's hard to be aware of what's going on around you and just enjoy the simple things of life, the blessings of life, the people that are with you in the moment, because mm-hmm. you are busy working on this, 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 and thinking about the next thing. And once you get finished with the next thing, you're already on to the next thing, mm-hmm. you know, without taking a breath. And I think there's a big difference between being hard at work for God and being overworked or over committing yeah. um, and overdoing. Yeah. And I'm not trying to to use this as an excuse for people backing off from service. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not a matter of just retiring (laughs) from Christian living or Christian service, but how much of what we're doing and committing to is really keeping us from maybe even better 
choices. Mm -hmm. Or they, I've, I ran across a quote that I can't wait to share because it really struck me being able to be there for people who need you. Yeah. Because how many times does somebody come up, somebody's hurting, somebody needs help, somebody needs you, and you're thinking, this could not have come at a worse time. Because mm -hmm. I've got to do this, 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 and this. Yeah. Yeah, it's a it's a tough thing. And, and one of the things that, you know, we have our running list that we share between the two of us of topics that we want to talk about. And one of the things that I had put in there was, do we come from a place of no or a place of yes? So what is, um, what is your gut when, when someone approaches you with something they, they need done or they want help with, or this opportunity comes up to, to do this for someone or to do this at the church building or to teach or whatever, what is your immediate thought? Oh no, I'm not going to do that. Or yeah, I'll do that. And, mm -hmm. and somewhere is a balance. Mm -hmm. between those two because we can't do everything we even if we want to do everything we can't and not just because we can't but because we need to let other people do things sometimes and mm -hmm. not have to do everything ourselves but I remember uh, a woman when my boys were little she was probably the age of me now and I thought she was kind of old back then <laughs> Yeah. And so now I'm thinking she was really young, but she was always busy. I mean, she would say things like, I just thought I was busy when I was your age. I'm busier now than I ever was. And it kind of annoyed me because I thought at the time, how in the world can you be busier? I've got kids always underfoot and I mm -hmm. can barely keep up with things going on at the house, you know, cleaning up after them and baseball practice and football practice. And church activities and ministry and all these other things. And she's telling me that she's busier at 50 something than she was at 20 something. It's a little depressing and a little annoying. <laughs> and I know she did not mean to be yeah. that way at all. But now that I'm there, I, I feel that way. And this is where I am right now. And I feel like sometimes I feel like I am trying to do everything and doing everything badly and not able to do the things that I really want to do. And, mm -hmm. and I, I mean, I missed Emmy's pre-K graduation this week mm -hmm. and her splash day today. And there's nothing that stabs me in the heart more than seeing that little face saying, y'all, y'all, you're going to come to splash day. And I can't say that I'm going to be there. Mm -hmm. And it's not because I'm doing something that's not good. It's been a great week and I needed to be here and I had commitments and there just wasn't a way that we could do it, but man, it hurts. Mm -hmm. So how do you, how do we not overdo good things? And I don't know the well, answer to that. Well, it's, it's really balance. Balance is the answer. And I think even God shows us the pattern for that, you know, and I think we always think of this being an old Testament concept of this day of rest, you know, because he doesn't, institute the Sabbath and the new law. But I think that Jesus shows us an example of taking time for rest yeah. and rest might look different for different people. But to me, mm -hmm. you've, you've mm -hmm. crossed the line. Everybody's different. Everybody's wired different. And some people like, some people like that and stay in boom, 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 over committed energizes them. And you can tell when you're talking to them that they are fine. But if if you're not that way and you've overcommitted to the point that you're feeling resentment when an opportunity to serve comes up or when somebody talks to you and asks you how you're doing and you're always going, oh, yeah, just trying to catch my breath, mm -hmm. you know, or um, some you're out of balance mm -hmm. there. And and then you you do miss out on those opportunities that sometimes you don't plan and you don't schedule. They just happen because yeah. it's family and it's people that you love and it's life and circumstances. And if you're so scheduled up and so overcommitted that there's no window for just being there for people, something's out of balance. Yeah. And I think it's so important to, to learn how to step back and say, um, what, what is the best use of my time? 
in my life right now, and everybody's at a different stage. It, like you say, it's way different when you have small children than when you're empty nesters. What's the best use of my time right now for the kingdom? And, and that involves the people that God has put in my life, mm -hmm. you know, and, and I'm wrestling with that. You know, I, you and I have talked about that before of, you know, it's a blessing and a, and a privilege to be able to travel and do speaking engagements, but I also don't like missing things that are happening in my home congregation. Yeah. That the people that I'm a church family with and I'm missing funerals. Yeah. You know, and so where's the balance? Where's the balance and all that? But um, <clears throat> I wanted to share this quote that I ran across and the woman, I don't really, I don't really know anything about her. So I looked at it really quickly and let me just say, um, in case <laughs> somebody looks her up, I don't agree with her religious affiliation but I love what she said. Okay. Mm -hmm. Her name is Marjorie Hinckley. And she said, I don't want to drive up to the pearly gates and a shiny sports car with beautifully styled clothing and a perfect blowout and manicured nails. I want to drive up in a car that has mud on the wheels from taking kids to camp. I want to be there with a smudge of peanut butter on my shirt from making sandwiches for my sick neighbor's kids. I want to be there with a little dirt under my fingernails from helping weed someone else's garden. I want to be there with children's sticky kisses on my cheeks and the tears of a friend on my shoulder. I want the Lord to know I was really here and that I really lived. Mm. And all of those things that she mentions, they're not things that you schedule in your planner. No. You know, they're just, they're the people. <laughs> around us and and it's hard to be present in these types of situations when we're exhausted and tired or we're not even around yeah and so what do you actually have time for you know is the question and it's not that you mind hard work it's not that you mind service but what are you prioritizing with your time what do you have time for where you can serve but you're not always feeling rushed you know, and, and for me, that's a big part of it. I don't mind hard work. I don't, I like being busy. I like being involved, but when you're so rushed that you've got this little window to get this done before you rush off to this thing, well, then I start feeling stressed mm -hmm. and I don't do my best work and I'm not as gracious with my own husband or somebody else that says, can you cover for me? And I'm like, are you kidding me? Yeah. You know, that's not good. That's not good. Yeah, this is where this is where I'm struggling is just I think because if you have to say no to somebody, you're going to say no to somebody that, you know, is going to love you anyway. And that you think to yourself, well, they're going to have to understand because this is already on the schedule and I can't, you know, what would I do if I, if I don't show up, if I can't show up, if I, I've already said, I'm going to do this. And I say, sorry, I can't be there because I need to go to my granddaughter's splash day, you know, mm -hmm. and that that's at the top of my list of, of what I want to do and what, you know, I want to be that grandmother, mm -hmm. but I can't because I'm doing this. So you have, I, I guess the solution to that is um, not scheduling those things, but I don't know how to not do that, especially, you know, John is a goer and a doer and he's, he's an, he's a workaholic. He really is. That's he nice. loves what he does. And, yeah. and I know <clears throat> you have this with Neil too. Mm -hmm. And, and I've always said this, as long as and we've been in ministry and I love what we do, I would not trade this life for any other life, mm -hmm. but how do you get upset with your husband's boss when it's God? <laughs> you can't, you know, because it's always, a good, it's always going to be a good thing. John's always going to be doing a good thing. And I, I, I'm confident and I'm thankful that the things that I'm doing are good things, but mm -hmm. It just, what you're saying is really, I'm going to drive up to the pearly gates with all kinds of junk all over me, but is it going to be the stuff that I want? You know, is it going to be the, and I, I don't think that there's an easy answer here because it's all good stuff, but mm -hmm. 
but to the, the people that matter the most to me. And I even hesitate to say that because people, other people besides my family matter to me, but they matter the most to me, but I don't feel like I show that often enough. And I don't know how to change that. And I think that that's the biggest challenge of all in all of this and all the things that you're doing, you weren't at splash day because you were serving God and you were encouraging other people through that. And that's a really good thing. And the things that you're filling your, your <laughs> planner with, they're all good things. The balance is looking at them. And, you know, for me, when I, when my kids left home, I felt like I was struck with this moment of who my life is half over. And so what is the second half of my life going to look like? And I'm the only one that has control over that. But as things evolve in life, it feels like you're the only one who has no control over it mm -hmm. and everybody else has control. And all of a sudden your life looks one way when you had no intention for it to turn out mm -hmm. that way. Yep. So I think when you prayerfully spend time in your closet, <laughs> you know, what, what am I going to fill these days with that are going to make the most impact in the most meaningful way? And all these things that, that, you know, hopefully we're all trying to do are good things, opportunities to serve in different ways, but what's going to make the most impact in the kingdom overall? And I keep going back to being present for people that God has put in your life. That's my neighbor. Yeah. And if I'm never around to cultivate a relationship with my neighbor, how am I going to love her and show her Jesus? Mm -hmm. That's my church family. That's my community. Yeah. That's the people that I see when I'm running errands in town. You know, that's my children and their families and my grandchildren. And I remember when the boys were little, we talked about this with the bringing up boys episode. You know, my biggest regret is I was involved in a lot of things that I felt like I could have put that on the back burner and been more present with them. But that challenge stays with you with all of your choices, you know, and I just think I'm not saying don't ever do this because you should only always be here. But I think sometimes we just let that get out of balance. Yeah. And then we're so scheduled up doing all these other things that we're not present yeah. in the lives of the people that God has put in our path and in our lives. And I can't help but think that those immediate contacts make the biggest impact. Yeah. What do you think? Yeah. I do. Um, it's, I guess, again, it's a matter, it's not a matter of sin, you know, no, 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 here no, no, we no. are with a, all of these good things to choose from. And, but I think sometimes the devil uses busy to distract us. Mm -hmm. And so learning discernment about what's the best choice to make. And, and I guess part of the problem is too, that not everyone understands the decisions that you make and they don't understand that sometimes those decisions are out of your control. And I know my five-year-old granddaughter is not going to understand that. Not that she's, she's blowing and going now and having fun doing whatever, but it's just when you have 12 good things to choose from and someone is telling you, this is the one that you should choose but your heart is telling you, this is the one that I want to choose. Mm -hmm. It's not wrong to do the one that, that your heart doesn't choose. <laughs> I don't know if I'm making any sense, but it is, that's just a difficulty. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I'm struggling with that. And I think probably, I know you are too. I think there's a lot of us that are struggling with overdoing things and, and it, it can be discouraging and I don't want to be discouraged. I want to, I want to continue to be encouraged by good things in my life. And well, so, and I think I chased a little bit of a rabbit trail with talking about ministry in particular, and that's probably where, well, but that's where we are. Yeah. Not, that's where you and I are, but we're, we're talking about, um, over committing in general and how to keep from doing that. I was thinking about, um, the whole staying focused on priorities mm -hmm. and because, our society is just 
thrives on busyness and, you know, people are going to, whatever you're willing to do, they're going to let you, Yeah. you know? And again, a lot of the stuff that we're doing is good, but I was thinking about Psalm 46, 10, um, be still and know that I am God, you know, intention again, it's, when are you going to take the time to do that? Is that just talking about when you pray first thing in the morning? Or is there more to it than that? Do you need Doesn't more time? Doesn't it mean cease striving or something like that? Or Yeah, to, to be still, quit moving, um, and know that I am God. And I was thinking about how <laughs> we, are, we, in a, we're, we are in a moving kind of world, you know, everything's instant, everything's quick, everything's always changing and on the go. And our lives are that way. And I think sometimes that can be really good, but it doesn't, it doesn't help what we're talking about. And we have to make that decision. I'm scheduling time away from all that other stuff Mm -hmm. that's pulling me away. Um, And I'm scheduling time to know God. Yeah. And to re-get to know God, I thought about um, Mark 6, verses 30 and 31, where um, the apostles gathered around Jesus and reported to, the, to him all they had done and taught. So they're doing all these good things. And they come to Jesus and they're reporting it. They're telling him. And it says, then, because so many people were coming and going that they did not even have a chance to eat. Mm-hmm. This is what Jesus said to them. Come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. So kind of going back to what I was trying to say, you know, I think we think of the whole idea of Sabbath as being an Old Testament thing. And it was, but Jesus gives this example. Don't we Mm -hmm. see him taking the time to go off by himself to spend time in prayer? Um, And he didn't stop serving. He didn't stop because right after this, they (laughs) You know, they went on ahead of them and they were waiting on them by the time they were done resting and got there and Jesus had compassion on them and he taught them and yeah. took care of their physical and spiritual needs. But here we have the apostles and they come to Jesus and they, here's what we've been doing. You know, all these good things. We've did this. We've done this. We've done this. And he says, um, let's take a break. Come, come away for a little bit. Let's go off by ourselves and rest and a quiet place. Yeah and get some rest. Do you even have a quiet place? Yeah. Do I? I don't know. Do you, you have your garden. (laughs) And that, I don't think that's a selfish thing. I think it makes a quiet place or a quiet time of rest makes us feel better about serving. Yeah. And gives us time to think about how we're using our time are we doing it in a way that makes the most impact with the people that God's put in our lives? Yeah. Your brain, I mean, your, your brain needs a rest too. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. physiologically and emotionally and spiritually, and just all of those ways, your brain needs time to just back down and quiet down. Mm -hmm. And I think that affects you in every other way when you, when you take time to rest and I just, we just don't do it. Just don't do it. Well, and this is probably another rabbit trail, but how hard is it to do that now, even when we want to, because, because of our phones. Yeah. We're always you know, within reach. We're instant access and people are constantly messaging and we feel like we have to reply right away. We have to read yeah. that message. We have to read, reply to that text. And there's, it's hard just to say, oh, I didn't even finish reading it. Verse 32 says, Jesus said, come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. Verse 32 says, so they went away by themselves in a boat to a solitary place. So we need to take a boat somewhere. (laughs) We're going to in October. (laughs) I don't think that's going to be a quiet place. (laughs) I don't either. I don't either. Yeah. Well, I I don't know that we're going to be able to solve that because uh, it's just too involved of an answer and there's too many moving parts, I guess, to, it's something maybe we have to look down the way a little bit more and Mm -hmm. say, this is something we've got to change. And, you know, honestly, we've tried and it's just, it's so hard to do. And, Mm -hmm. and so in some ways I have just come to terms with, it's going to be like this. Mm -hmm. 
So anyway, um, we're well, in a lot busy. of these things, it's not like there's a wrong choice, right? But All which choice, things. which choice would you feel better about? Which choice would you feel less regrets yeah. in some way about? And like you said, the most impact. Yeah. But what does that look like? What is the most impact on who? Well, you know? it's, yeah. And balancing things out saying, you know, maybe it's just a matter of cutting back. I'm yeah. still serving in this way, but I'm not going to commit to as much. I'm going to leave open weekends so that I am here for mm -hmm. the funerals and the things that come up with my neighbor or my friend or my Christian sister, or, you know, yeah. I can yeah. go make time for other things. Well, that's, I'm sure we'll talk more about that by ourselves. Cause I mean, we, you and I've talked about that lots of times before, just mm -hmm. where we are in life and how things feel and, you know, wanting, we want to do good things and the right things and the most, like you said, the most impact, but sometimes we feel like we're making the choice that we're supposed to make rather than the one that really is better for us, which feels selfish, I guess, because we don't <clears throat> think that we're supposed to choose things that are best for us. Mm -hmm. But anyway, well, so, okay, here's another overdoing, shifting gears just a little bit. What about when we overdo hosting and um, baby showers and wedding showers and things like that in the sense that we, maybe it's not overdoing. Sometimes I feel like it is when everything is so perfect mm -hmm. and it looks so amazing and you walk in and you have that wow factor mm -hmm. and you just can't believe that someone can put all this together. Mm -hmm. And then I think sometimes other people go, I can never do that. Mm -hmm. So I will never try. Yeah. Have you seen that? Is, do you think that's an oh, issue? Absolutely. And I've, I've seen that even with my own hospitality struggles, because, you know, I'll go to somebody else's house and they will have this amazing spread, you know, like all the expensive cuts of meat and more than one option, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, or this big, beautiful house where everything is absolutely perfect. And then I'm thinking, well, I don't want them coming to my house for yeah. my spaghetti, <laughs> you, know? <laughs> uh, you know, and it's, and you think, well, we'll, we'll, we'll go meet at a restaurant somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But that's what I'm talking about. Sometimes I just think we overdo things to the point where and intentions are good. You know, mm -hmm. we intend to make, make people feel at home or we're trying to bless others with, with our talents. And some people just have the most amazing talents when it comes to decorating things or sewing things, or, mm -hmm. you know, just making things look so cool, yeah. but it just sometimes makes me feel so inadequate. Mm -hmm. And I think I'm just, I don't even want to try. And again, I'm, I'm not trying to put blame and burden on those who are doing good things. Although maybe they just tone it down a little bit, <laughs> you know, but just thinking about how, when we are hospitable, what, in, in fact, what does hospitable mean? And it made me think of that article that Laura Warren's wrote that hospitality is not about me. Have mm -hmm. you read that? Yes. I, I intended yeah. to take a screenshot of some of it, but we'll link it. I'm sure in either in the show notes or in, in the group next week, but she said that hospitality has nothing to do with entertaining and everything to do with service. Mm -hmm. And that was, that was pretty mind blowing mm -hmm. to me the first time I read it, because I think of hospitality as being entertaining mm -hmm. and it does, you know, it is in some ways but you're serving someone by being hospitable rather than trying to just blow them out of the water and impress them. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I feel like that may be what I'm trying to do. Cause I, I like to do things and make them look good. And I like for people to think that I'm talented at hosting, whatever. Mm -hmm. yeah, I remember when we did mom and dad's 50th anniversary and and, and it was so much fun. We got mom's dress out and we put it on a mannequin and set it in the corner. And we put a big mural on the wall with, we made a big five zero 
out of pictures, you know, just a collage of pictures. And we put things all over the tables and we had a, a big spread with homemade ice cream and stuff like that. And I know my motives and they were not to blow anybody out of the water and, and make them think how awesome I am. I wanted people to, to, I wanted to draw attention to mom and dad, but looking back on it, I wonder if it was, if it was a little too much. And again, I don't want anybody to think that I'm shaming anybody for, for doing something yeah. neat like that, but just maybe just something to think about to not well, overdo things. I'm glad you brought that up because not too long ago, Neil and I were traveling and we were in different homes back to back, you know, and one of them was really, really fancy. And the meal was at the dining room table with all the good dishes and, you know, the, the good silverware and glasses and, you know, everything was all beautiful magazine worthy, you know, and Mm -hmm. then the next night, um, it was like the polar opposite, you know, plastic cups, paper plates, um, a, a much more casual meal, you know, and we were talking about it later. And I said, which one did you actually enjoy more? And we both agreed beyond the shadow of a doubt. It was the casual one. Mm-hmm. I mean, we just felt, and I love dishes. Yeah, <laughs> I'm that kind of person. I love a set table. I love yeah. trying fancy things. You know, that mm-hmm. I enjoy that very much. But as far as being a guest in somebody's yeah. home, you know, um, when in one home, you're kind of going, wow. Yeah. But in the other home, you're just relaxed and you're enjoying the company. You go, and uh, yeah, there's a big difference. And mm -hmm. so, and we both agreed that hands down, the most enjoyable evening was at the casual table with the paper plates and everybody just kind of sat around and leaned back and talked and laughed and, Mm -hmm. you know, and, and the other one was more, you know, maybe careful with my glass, you know, and Uh so that's something to think about is, um, you know, it's not about entertaining it's about service and Mm -hmm. what's how's it going to make them feel what can make them what can make people just relax and feel comfortable and right just enjoy the people and the occasion instead of being awed by all the fanfare surrounding it yeah yeah that's a word are we awing people Mm -hmm. or ah ing people (laughs) there you go so overdoing that yeah. that's just another one and uh, so good good discussion mm-hmm. and we're probably breaking another record uh, yeah i think we we've been talking wanna... for three hours now uh maybe not quite maybe two i don't know how long we've been talking but i've enjoyed it i always enjoy it and we probably should wrap it up and and uh just let everybody think about things and give us some feedback and what you think about these things and as far as mm-hmm overreacting or, or overanalyzing, overthinking, overdoing, Mm -hmm. and, and how, how can we do better and how can we make the best use of our time and our our thoughts and our intents. And, and so we'd love to hear from you. Just let us know what you think. Yes. Yes. And thank you for listening. Yes. Thank you very much for listening. Mm -hmm. So are we going to talk about, I see good people. Did you think of good people? I did. I wasn't sure if we were going to do that or in a random question. So but I came up with a a good, a good people story. Tell me about your good people. All right. Well, we have, um, a senior in high school named Chase Johnson, who's been bringing a friend of his to church. His friend's name is Jonas. And, um, they've been studying with Hiram and Neil's been in the study too, because Jonas speaks Swahili and Neil knows a little Swahili. Mm -hmm. And so Sunday night, Jonas wanted to put on his Lord in baptism Mm. And Chase baptized him. Wow. And um, this was right after worship ended. Chase baptized him. And when when Jonas came up out of the water, Chase just turned around and wrapped his arms around him in this mm. big hug, just held on to him, put his hand up on the back of Jonas's head. Oh, wow. You know, and and uh, well, then we were all in a big, big circle, the whole church afterwards singing and one of our elders made some encouraging remarks to Jonas and it was just so touching. And I, all I kept thinking about was this high school kid, you know, he's a senior, he's graduating. I'm sure he has so much on his mind right now yeah. in this point of his life, caring enough to invite a friend to church and sit in on those studies and 
baptize him, you know, and to me, that's the ultimate good person. Oh. I just thought that's the perfect story to share. I wondered if so, I, I knew somebody had been baptized. I saw Rita McGuire had posted on Facebook about how she loved her church family. And, mm -hmm. and then somebody commented about what an amazing circle. So I, I mm -hmm. assumed, and I meant to ask you about it and I forgot. So that's awesome. That's just yeah. so amazing. It was great. It's what it's that all about. Good. Yeah. Well, I thought about, there are so many, you know, the university congregation that hosted focal point this week, but in particular, there's a family, uh, a couple, Andrew and Jana O'Bannon. And I've known Andrew most of my life because he grew up in that congregation and I did too. And Jana I've known for a long time, but they, they are servants of the highest degree. And they're always the ones that are cooking the meals and picking up the trash. And I can't tell you how many times I walked past her and she's carrying a trash can. She's cleaning up the bathroom after people, you know, they're the last to leave. And mm -hmm. probably the first there, they're, they cooked barbecue for everyone one of the days this week and just always involved. And it's not just at focal point. Jana is the cook and Andrew, they're both the head cooks at Beach Valley the camp that Jordan and Aaron do every year. And Jana is just the most gracious and grace filled person. She'll be sitting on her chair there at camp and she'll be going over the recipe or whatever she's getting ready to do for the next meal. And I always hated interrupting her thoughts, but she just looks up with a smile. You know, she's one of those people that always looks up with a smile mm -hmm. and they, they're just, they have two great kids and I just love them. They're just, they're just such good people. So what a wonderful compliment to say about somebody. Which part? She always looks up with a smile. Well, yeah, I love yeah. that. If you know her, you know that she really does. If you if you make any eye contact with her, even if you're not making eye contact, she's got a smile. She wears a smile. So mm. good people. Yes. Good, good right. place to end. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thanks again to our listeners for joining us. And um, we would love to hear from you, like we said, and we would just appreciate your, your listening and your prayers and just, mm -hmm. we enjoy what we're doing and enjoying that we get to share it with so many people that are listening. So, yeah. And we pray for y'all too, because we pray before we start recording and we pray for our listeners also. Yeah, so. we do. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing you in a few days. Yeah, it's going to be good. I tell you what, Monday, that's the day that I'm looking forward to. That's a day of, of rest in a, in a way. So it'll be good. That's right. Looking forward to it. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, until next time, keep looking up. All right. Love you. Talk to you soon. Bye. Bye.